in a time of fear. Our Bible reading is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 to 19. 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 to 19. Let us hear the word of God. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us. So that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Amen. Over the last week or two, everywhere I look, I have encountered both fear and hope. Even more so now that we are in a period of lockdown. The news is scary. There is fear in people's eyes. However, there is also a great number of mainly Christians who have hope. Hope amidst all this chaos. Hope that God is still in control. And that we who have read the end of the Bible know that in the end, God wins. Through his perfect love, that was displayed on the cruel yet lovely cross of Calvary. Then on Easter Sunday when Christ rose from the grave, we can see that God wins, that love wins. The Apostle John says that, pe that God's perfect love drives out fear. In the original Greek, the words driving out is the same words used by Jesus when he drove out the moneylenders from the temple and casting demons out of those who were oppressed. The love that John speaks of isn't a love that soothes our fear gently. This type of love, it isn't polite, it is forceful, uncompromising. There is some sort of violence in the way that it kicks terror out of our hearts and minds. Someone said to me last week, God will protect us. And I responded by saying, yes, that is correct. However, we cannot be silly. It isn't safe to put our heads in an alligator's mouth and expect it not to be bitten, or our hand in a fire and not expect it to be burned. God will protect us during this time of crisis. But we must play our part too, by staying at home as appropriate, shopping sensibly and washing our hands, etc. It's important to face the facts, even when things are scary. It is even more important to focus on the ultimate and enduring reality of God's love. As I continue to prepare my own heart, for Good Friday in 16 days time and amidst all the fear and chaos around me I focus my thoughts upon the image of Jesus Christ upon the cross acknowledging its terror and also allowing thanks to arise in my heart for this is a tangible proof that love wins that God wins and that we are on the winning team but we must play our part. As I return to the passage, I notice the way what the Apostle John repeats the word love again and again, nine times in total, once for every twelve words. It is like the heart beating musically through the text and through the years. Listen to the words again that John wrote and count yourself 
the amount of times he says love. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world. We are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. I heard a story that was told about the Apostle John who wrote these wonderful words about love. In his old age, they would carry him from place to place, church to church, barely breathing. The last remaining connection on earth with the human son of God. And whenever he arrived anywhere, crowds would gather to hear him speak. With great effort, he would sit up in his stretcher and the room would fall silent, hushed in eager anticipation. Love one another, he would cry. Love one another. He would then lie down, his three-word sermon over, and he would be carried to the next congregation. In the end, as one old wise saint said, the only thing that will matter is how well you loved. How might I drive fear from another person's life today? By the simple power of love. So here is my three word sermon that I would like you to focus on today and in the uncertain days ahead. Love one another. Let us pray. At this time of so much fear, we take hold of God's promise in Isaiah 43. Finding courage in this beautiful assurance for the day to come. Isaiah writes, Hear the word of the Lord. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Remembering the way that Jesus had compassion upon Mary, even from the cross. I think now of people who are particularly fearful at this time. The elderly. The parents with young children. The unwell. The isolated. Those without work. Those struggling to pay the basic bills those who have no one to call or to be called upon. Today we present each one of them to Jesus Christ on the cross and we entrust them to his love, his perfect love. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before we close by singing again, I would just like to say, if today or tomorrow or in the weeks to come, you are struggling, then please phone Please get in touch and let us talk to one another. Let us love one another. Let us support one another in these testing times. For we are church. We are family. And family love. We close by singing the hymn based on Isaiah 43. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. <laughs>